Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? You know, I am not going to complain, Kyle. It's it's like the season's starting all over again, isn't it? It is. Yes, we've been waiting for this for a while now. Well, since since January, we've been kind of counting down, I, waiting for this game here. We knew it was going to be a big one. Heck, even even at the end of the Ohio State Notre Dame game last year, we were kind of counting down to heading on over to to Notre Dame's place and because we knew this this was going to be the big test for Ohio State because we knew the talent that that Notre Dame was going to bring back and that it was it was just going to be much tougher to to play Notre Dame at their place and here we are uh not only that but we also knew like who we were losing off of that team i mean go go back and watch know your enemy last year go back and watch know your enemy last year i say in that episode we we should handle Notre Dame just fine. Uh, Freeman's a great coach. He won't have them started yet. They'll be much better by the end of the season. I'm not worried about Notre Dame. That's what I said about Notre Dame in last year's Know Your Enemy. I then proceeded to say, I am much more worried about Notre Dame next year. And here I am a year later and I co-sign what I said a year ago. Uh, last year, I didn't consider Notre Dame a legit threat to beat Ohio State. They played closer than I think we are anticipating. They, um, but I was right. They didn't have a good start to the season. Um, <laughs> they were already talking about firing Freeman before they got out of September. Um, and, and then they got better as the year went. You know, and it's, you know, if, and if anyone's like starting to bury Luke Fickle in Wisconsin, just, just know that like it's, it's all a cycle, y'all. It's all a cycle. Um, it is. And, and so you know, I, I was right. Here we are a year later and everyone loves Freeman. Notre Dame's trending in the correct direction and they're a really, really good team. Yeah, no, absolutely. So let's let's just jump right into it, Jared. Notre Dame. So what, what, do, we, what do we know about Notre Dame here? Well, are you, well, you, you going to say it? Oh, you want me to say it or do you want to say it? I feel like you like saying it more. All right. I, well, I feel like it. All right. Uh, know your enemy, the Notre Dame fighting Irish. There you go. You're, you're better Dame. at that. You're, you're better at that than I am. All right. <laughs> so Notre Dame coming into this game here, played four games, so one more than Ohio State here, beating Navy, Tennessee State, NC State, and Central Michigan. Kind of similar to Ohio State, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be honest here, haven't really played anybody yet. No, I mean, NC State's probably the best opponent of the two between the two teams here. That of the seven collective opponents, NC State's probably the best team, and yeah. uh, that's saying a lot more about six of the teams than it is about NC State. Mm-hmm. I think NC yeah. State's probably a, a, a good defensive team, but their offense is garbage. Um, Kyle, you're ready for this one. The best collective team, or I should say offense among the seven teams is probably Western Kentucky. Maybe, but I, it's still oh, too early gonna, to, I'm a, I'm to I'm say a, that. I Well, yeah, I mean, so far. That's the best offense that either of these teams have played. Because here's the thing, and I do like Notre Dame. I think they're a very good team, and I, I can I can run I can run everyone through the stats, and the stats are impressive. Uh, if we look at like their defensive stats, opponents' points per game under fifteen, they're number twenty two ranked in the country. Uh, opponents yards per ga- opponents yards per games at 260 which ranks them ninth in the country opponents points per play they are at uh only 0.229 23rd in the country um 
opponent yards per play 4.1, which puts them 14th in the country. These are all very impressive stats. And we can look at the passing statistics. Um, completion percentage. They're holding Kyle. They're holding the other team to a completion percentage of 46.67. Teams incomplete more than they complete against Notre Dame. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Opponents, to me. opponent yards per pass per attempt. 5.9, 28th in the country. Passing yards per game, 146.7, 13th in the country. Okay, okay. One of those teams, though, Jared, is Navy. <laughs> one I of those have... teams is still Navy. And one of them is an FCS school. And one of them is an FCS school. Um, but Kyle, I have news for you. Because I was looking at this schedule. Navy, Tennessee State, NC State, Central Michigan. And I thought to myself, who's the best passing team that they have played so far? And I and I get like we're still we're still in September. It's still pretty young in the season. We can we can look at all sorts of different stats and come to all sorts of different conclusions about okay. I'll give you a hint, Jared. It's not Navy. I disagree with you. No, Leary is not with NC State anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. Le Le Leary's gone. Uh, NC State is is uh, not a good passing team. Kyle, I'm willing to make the argument. No. If you're willing to listen to the argument. No, Jared. That the best passing team they have played so far is Navy. No, Jared. Just stop right there. No. I'm not letting you Kyle? that. No. Yards no. per pass. No. Laugh my ass if Jared drops a yard per pass stat. <laughs> <laughs> he got that in before I said it. <laughs> I With the delay, because there's a little bit of a delay. Yards per pass. Navy is... 6.5 yards per pass, 83rd in the country. Which of the four opponents is the best? I, well, uh, I, it's actually of the three opponents because the site I look at doesn't rank all the FCS stuff. So it's actually of the three opponents, yards per pass, Navy at 83rd in the country, 6.5 yards per pass is the best in the country. Excuse well, of the teams that Notre Dame's played, obviously. And none of them, if you want to do yards per game, if you're like, Jared, Navy doesn't throw it all that often. And when they do, it's a downfield. So it kind of, because everyone's so focused. If you do yards per pass, or excuse me, yards per game, I believe it becomes NC State at that point. And they're still in the hundreds. They haven't played a top 100 passing team yet this 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 year. So we can look at again, we can we can pour through all of these stats. And they haven't paid they haven't played a quarterback yet. And They've be, not well, go on. Go on. They haven't they haven't played any wide receivers, they haven't played any quarterbacks yet. No, no, you're gonna you're gonna have the the uh, rebuttal, Jared. Oh, Ohio State hasn't played anybody either, but but, but just watch uh, Reed as the year goes along goes along and see how many yards he gets to throw uh, for the for the whole year. Because I think Reed from Western Kentucky will have a lot of yards by the end of the season. He had the most yards in college football last season. We don't have to wait to see. We've seen it already. Western Kentucky is probably tougher than most Big Ten teams outside of Teton, Penn State, and Maryland. I wasn't expecting Maryland. Uh, passing wise, passing wise. Uh, Jared keeps Notre Dame's national rankings uh, in stat categories handy. I want to see how much uh, they change after this week. Uh, I mean, 
Esquire, we have literally every single show note we've done for nine years of the Sloopcast. And I have screenshots. We we make it. We make a we make a new Google Doc every time we record a new podcast. Um, the the uh, the stats are permanently enshrined in our Google Drive. Let's revisit in Scarlet and Gray. Remind me. It is a good idea. I want to do that. If we win, if we don't win, I'm probably going to be in too bad of a mood. Um, All right. So let let's get to let's let's get to know Notre Dame here. I know we we've been beating around the the bush here about who who Notre Dame has played and this and that, but I've been beating around the but, bush. I, I dove straight in. Let's talk about the players here for Notre Dame. Uh, Sam Hartman, their quarterback this yeah. year after uh, serious high school candidate. Mm -hmm. After their uh, quarterback decides to transfer out and uh, how I how's think he doing you have, here? I think you have the timeline backwards there, Kyle. I think I think you have the timeline backwards on that. <laughs> Over a thousand yards already uh, in the season. So he's averaging, what is that, 250, 250 yards a game, 13 touchdowns already and zero interceptions for the leads, year so far. Leads the country in touchdowns, fifth in the country in yards. Yeah, so I, when, you, when you look at this Notre Dame team, one thing that really, well, quite a few things stick out here but one thing here is that Notre Dame doesn't really turn the ball over mentioned zero interceptions from uh, from the quarterback Sam Hartman but they've only lost two fumbles they've had four fumbles lost two of them so they they they've been doing a pretty good job of of not uh losing the ball here but defensively they they don't really cause a lot either I, they haven't recovered a fumble yet, and I think there was what did I see four? I think it was four interceptions for the year. Uh, looking here, oh, nope, I lied. Five. They have they have five interceptions for the years, but uh, but this this defense though from Notre Dame, I was really really surprised to see uh, just how um, veteran they are. You know, there was a yeah. question here. There was a question here from our. Our newest uh, Sloop Cat, who's in the uh, in the channel here, uh, I'm just going to call him AZ. He he uh, he says here that um, that he assumes Notre Dame's strength is the quarterback, offensive line, and running back. But how is their defense, specifically the pass defense? I don't know much other than Hartman and the running back. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the defense as, here. Well, as 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 I already at least told you from the passing side, we don't know. Yeah, we, we really don't know because they haven't really been tested. But one one advantage that Notre Dame has. I don't even know if they the sat defense, in the chair yet, Kyle, let alone been tested. I don't, I don't even know if they've been to class yet. Very, very veteran. You look on the, so they're down linemen, graduate, graduate, senior. They're linebackers, senior, graduate, graduate, graduate. They're, they're uh, secondary Graduate, 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 junior, sophomore, graduate transfer. Lots of seniors, lots of graduate seniors on this uh, on this team here. Kyle, what I heard is a lot of guys who weren't NFL uh, quality who could have left early. So that's all, that's what I heard. I'm, I'm playing. I'm I playing. hear you. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. That's a joke. <laughs> is it? But I, but I think that's one thing uh, definitely to keep an out eye out for is is Notre Dame being able to not have many mental mistakes is what was my first uh, gut instinct. But then Jared and I were talking before we hit the record and maybe not, maybe not the case here because Notre Dame actually does get penalized quite a bit here. Six from what you saw, Jared. penalties a game, um, upwards of nearly 55 penalty yards per game. Um, so, I mean, it's not, those aren't atrocious numbers, but um, they they also aren't great. And and for what it's worth, Kyle, you're talking about the defense. They are getting, um, they are getting linebacker J.D. Uh, Bertrand and safety D.J. Brown back for this game. Um, 
the concussion and a hamstring respectively. They're both expected to return in this game. So they're getting some guys back. Um, they're getting tight end Mitchell Evans back as well, who also had a concussion along with DJ Brown. Um, yeah, it's. I kid about the defense. I also tell some truths about the defense, but I also kid about the defense. Um, it's a it's a solid defense. In theory. But we just honestly haven't seen it tested yet. And again, neither Ohio State nor Notre Dame have uh, played anyone great yet. As Kyle and I said, NC State is probably the best collective. Of the collective opponents, NC State's probably the best team. I would argue that Western Kentucky is the best offense that either of these teams have have played. Uh, you could probably make the case that NC State is. Is that is that fair, Kyle? Would you say NC State's the best defense that either opponent has played to this point? Not saying much, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hartman got away with several bad passes against NC State. What he says, uh, what he also said, if NC State hadn't thrown three picks, that game is tight. Yeah, the NC State game uh, was a lot tighter than the 45 to 24 game. Uh, the the score at 45 to 24 would lead you to believe um, that game was a lot tighter than that for a while. NC State did implode a bit. Um, I don't yeah, think. It was a seven point game going into the fourth quarter. There it was 24 yeah. to 17. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and then Notre Dame packed on a bunch of points in the fourth quarter, made it look good. But yeah, it was not a great showing from Notre Dame against. Again, clearly the best team they've played so far this year. Um, You, you could say the same thing about Ohio State and Indiana if you wanted to. You could. Um. I, I would make the argument, however, that the defense, Ohio State's defense against Indiana was spectacular, and their offense was made up of a bunch of new guys all playing their first game um, or starting their first game, rather. So there, there was some growing pains to be expected there. Um, Notre Dame is, as Kyle pointed out, uh, on the defense, but also just as a team, very veteran across the board. Kyle, have we made it uh, this this far without bringing up Estime yet? I, I think he's an incredibly impressive running back. Um, very. Yeah, very, very impressive. He's averaging over eight yards a carry, five touchdowns for the season already. I mean, behind that, uh, very, very good offensive line. That that's probably the one that's probably the one part that I'm really worried about this game is Ohio State being able to to not let up those um additional rushing yards uh from uh from the running backs here. Because over eight yards of carry there. And we've seen already this year Ohio State at times struggle to maintain leverage at the at the uh, line of scrimmage there. And you're going to up against arguably the best offensive line you're going to face all year. It's it's a big challenge for for this defensive line to to step up, be big and and hold their ground here. Yeah, and the the trenches is where all of my anxieties lay. Lie? Um, that that's where all my anxiety is. I couldn't decide. I I've never been good at lay versus lie. If I'm being honest, Kyle. Um, Notre Dame is very big and very veteran, uh, and very talented across both lines. Um, it's a concern. You know, with what we've seen from Ohio State, you know, specifically against Michigan, what, you know, if a team decides to put two tight ends on the field and run it straight at you, are you going to be able to do anything about it? And I don't know if we have the answer to that question at this time. Um, 
we've seen Ohio State get burned by old school Big Ten football, which is what you know Michigan does. Um, we've seen Ohio State just get burnt and 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 ripped apart by that a couple times in recent years, and you look at this Notre Dame Fighting Irish team, and that is what they are completely capable of doing with Estime with this offensive line. And none of that, I've not even mentioned Sam Hartman, who again is a Heisman level quarterback. This will be an incredible test for the defense. An incredible test for the defense. Um, this is going to be an incredibly difficult football game. Notre Dame is very, very good. Um, they have a, a really nice core of wide receivers, Jaden Thompson, Jaden Greathouse, and uh, Chris Tyree. Um, I don't know if there's, and I don't know if there's like one guy among them who is, you know, we're we're spoiled at Ohio State where we have this insane core of wide receivers. Um, and I don't think there's of those three guys. I don't think there's a guy who. Uh, makes the Ohio state too deep if I'm being honest, but as a crew, they are very good. There's not any one guy among those wide receivers who is like the guy, but they all sort of have their thing. Uh, great house has the most touchdowns. Tyree has the most yards. Uh, Jaden Thomas has the most receptions. They have their roles and they're very, very good at it. And one name, one name to really look out for, Jared, on the defensive side, uh, who's who's playing the defensive end there? Who's wearing the number one jersey for Notre Dame? Yeah, uh, I why why J can't Javante uh, Jean Baptiste Jean Baptiste? I kept wanting to say Petit Fari. No. I I can only <laughs> think of Petit Fari for whatever dumb reason. That's that's the only thing my 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 brain was was feeding my mouth. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jack Kaiser at linebacker is an incredible football player. Um, Xavier Watts is a really good defensive back. Uh, Howard Cross, Kyle, see, they're leading tackler along the defensive line. Their nose tackle, Howard Cross. Is that correct? Um, the uh, defensive line, yes. Yeah. Uh, Kaiser, I'm sure, is the leader for the team. He has to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kaiser. Yeah. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Um, they have talent. They have a lot of talent in the defensive side. I don't know if they have like the jam packed every single position talent the way Ohio State does. But they make up for that by being more veteran, by being older, by being. Like just just more veteran, you know, just a little bit more experienced. Um, so, you know, they, they make up for that. You know, Jared, we, we have um, every year we, we do the uh, we look at the pick six previews for the uh, just the preview of the season and uh, get ready for college football here. And one, and one of the stats in there is about returning productivity. Yeah, I hate to see what Notre Dame's will be next year. <laughs> Both oh offensively, yeah, def well defensively here, like how much offensively too. Sam Hartman's gone. Um, I know they'll lose a decent chunk of the offensive line. Um, the running back may be gone too. He's maybe eligible to go, and maybe uh, Mitchell Evans as well, the tight end. Maybe I would, I would assume, I would assume so. And there, and one of their leading receivers, uh, Chris Tyree, who has. Uh, only eight, catch, eight catches, but 216 yards for the season already. So he's he's their deep threat for, for Notre Dame. And then you have Jaden and Jaden, <laughs> uh, the other two wide, starting wide receivers who have a combined uh, or have about 10 to 12 catches, about 130 to 180 yards each. So it's not it's not just one player that Sam throws to. He's he has he has a quite a few options to throw the ball to. So it's, it's going to be a big challenge for this Ohio state defense, but from what we've seen from this Ohio state, Ohio state defense, I feel, I feel so much better 
<laughs> than I did at the end of the season because just all the defensive woes that we're used to for the past few years here, and we're finally seeing a good defense that's not letting up the big plays. They're tackling well. And from the last game here, creating turnovers and scoring touchdowns. And scoring touchdowns. As we pointed out uh, during Scarlet and Grade, um, Ohio State's defense has scored the same number of touchdowns that they have let up, which um, I believe it was Esquire. No, it was... Um, it was Duncan. I think it was Duncan who s said to me the next day in the Discord server, what an Iowa-esque stat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's um, it's 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 just it's hard to tell. I think you have two very talented, two very good teams who just ain't played nobody, Paul. Yeah, but, uh, but and, and again, especially the Irish talent, though. Yeah, but they're yes. loaded with talent, though. Yes, loaded. absolutely. Um, that that I think that goes without saying. But when it when it comes to like, they've Notre Dame has really just not played a a a, a team, an offensive team with a pulse. Again, Navy is arguably the best passing team they've played so far. Navy. Stop it. They have the most passes per or the yards per pass. Just stop, Jared. Right there. They Just have stop. the most yards per pass. They're the most efficient passing team. But Jared, Navy doesn't throw it. Well, uh, their statistics beg to differ. Well, you, you better you better tell the Navy coach and just tell them, look, you guys should pass more. You guys do so well passing. Just oh, no, they still stop. suck at passing. Their, their, their yards per pass are it still puts them at. I, I said it earlier in the show. It's like 88th or something in the country. It's not good. Navy being the best passing team that Notre Dame has played so far. <laughs> is an indictment on Tennessee State, NC State, and Central Michigan. Yeah. None of whom rank in the top 100 in that category. Again, ten, not not Tennessee State. The, the FCS, I don't have FCS stats that the rankings don't include FCS teams, so I can't include them in that conversation, but they suck. They just suck less. Yes. Uh. So, so what, I, what you, you could because you can at least say that Ohio State has not played a collectively good team yet, but you can you very easily could say that they played a pretty good, much better than expected. Uh, Woody uh, in the Discord chat at one point says uh, Indiana showed itself well against Louisville, uh, which is a decent offensive team. Indiana's defense. I'm not. I'm not saying they're great. Don't get me wrong. Indiana's defense actually might be pretty decent. We've talked at length about how good Western Kentucky's offense actually is, despite the fact that, you know, Ohio State held them to 10 points. Ohio State's not played collectively a good team yet, but I think they've paid, played a pretty good defense in Indiana, and I think they played a very good offense in Western Kentucky. And no, they aren't. No, they aren't. Are you talking about Indiana's defense? It's better than we were giving it credit for. I'm not saying it's great. I'm saying it's better. It's it's not as good as Notre Dame's defense. I'm not trying so to make game, that case. Some of this game here, Jared, Ohio State, Notre Dame. What does Ohio State have to do well to to win this game? Block. But that's the that that's it. To me, to me here, when you're looking at the stats and comparisons between the two teams, one big thing that really, really sticks out, and, and Ryan Day has talked about it almost every game, about them needing to do better in it, and that's third down conversion. Honestly, it's only 31%, only 31% in third down conversions. 
Why are they only 31% in third down conversions, Kyle? Because they struggle to run the ball. to convert, Especially the in short yardage situations, which mm-hmm. is uh, a product of what, Kyle? Product of blocking. blocking. We said the same thing. <laughs> you took you took a long route to say the same thing I, I said. I did, but my, my way was more entertaining, Jared. No, I, I think I think the fact that me, the loud mouth who talks all the time, uh, chose to answer your question with a single word was um, undeniably funny. Right. Uh, anything else? Any other players to watch out for or any anything else we should uh, talk about before we get into our predictions here? Man, I don't know. It's. It's all I've I've been saying it. I've been saying it all summer hell back into the spring. Everything that is everything about Ohio State is up to the offensive line. This Ohio State team can win the national title if the offensive line can get them there. It is all about the offensive line. Everything else is in place. We can talk about certain groups and are they achieving what they should be achieving, considering the talent they have and yada, 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 you know, are, are they, but the one weakness on this team is the offensive line. And I think that they can improve. I think they are improving, uh, but they're going to need to continue to get better and we'll see just how big of a detriment the offensive line is or isn't in this game. Uh, because Notre Dame's defensive line can bring it. All right, let's let's get into the predictions here, Jared, then. Let's Ohio do that. State pl- Ohio State player to watch. Who do you have here? Um, I'm gonna go with Carson Hinsman. It's it's all it's all on the offensive line. Carson Hinsman, center. Um, we've talked a lot, or you know, we well, not about a lot, but we mentioned Howard Cross, um, and a group of really good defensive linemen. I, I think he's at least the most productive one in the crew. Um. If I say it wants to win, they they have to block. They have to block well. They they need to get four to five yards on first down and not one to two. If you want your third downs to get better, it starts on first down. If you want to get third yep. down, you have to start on first down. You can't be getting one or two yards on first down. You need to be getting four or five. So my, my player to watch here, something similar but i'm going to the opposite side i think i think ohio state if they can get that leverage if they can get that push off the snap i think Ohio State can find success getting pressure down the middle of the notre dame offensive line so i'm, I'm going to go i'm going to go with our boy i'm going to go with our uh our boy mike hall here as my ohio state player to watch here we, we've seen mike hall feast already uh this year and and heck to even a degree like Tyreek Williams too. We've seen the defensive tackles create some good pressure down the middle, especially as the game goes along, they wear, they wear the team down, but I'm going to go with Mike Hall. I I think, I think Mike Hall can make, be an impact for Ohio state here. And if he can, and if he can get that pressure, that's going to bode really well and keep Notre Dame uh, off balance here. What's next? Uh, our guest picker. Did our guest picker make any predictions here? Uh, he just did the game. He just did the game. All right. All right. We will. We will cover that down later. All right. Enemy player to watch here. I. Right. A lot. A lot of names. A lot of names to go off of here. But I'm. Uh, I'll. I'll go. Actually, I'll go with uh, Aldrick. I'll go with the running back here. I think I think Ohio State can keep him under. Say if they can keep him under four yards a carry, that is a huge win. 
think that is a huge one. If, if they can keep him under four, four and a half yards at carry, I think that's going to be, I think that'll mean that Ohio State is doing really well and has a really good chance to win the game. Uh, Austin says, I mean, I'll cheapen it and say Hartman. <laughs> Hartman's understood. I don't, Kyle didn't say Hartman. I don't plan on saying Hartman. I'll tell you who I'm, I'm, I'm taking here in a second. But also, I think it's just kind of, I think it's also just kind of understood that it's Hartman, right? Um, but no, I'm going to go with Joe Alt. Uh, Joe Alt is their very big uh, NFL bound left tackle. Um, he's a junior, Kyle. I don't think he'll be returning for his senior year. Um, nope, they're horrible mascot. <laughs> I almost said alt, but I don't think it matters how well our ends play against alt. I mean, when when I a lot when I mention an offensive lineman, Austin, I, I'm typically using them as a placeholder for the entire offensive line. And that's just me saying the biggest factor in this game, one of the two biggest factors I would say in this game are Ohio State's defensive line versus Notre Dame's offensive line. Um, and that's just me. Me saying Joe Alt is me saying the offensive line is the biggest deal, but I'm not going to say the entire offensive line, so I'm going to pick out the best offensive lineman. That's, that is what that is code for. Kyle, that is not All a right. matchup. That is, that is a statistic. As I see you writing it in the show notes, key matchup, Jared. What is your key matchup? Uh, key matchup. I'm going to flip the trench. I'm going to jump it over to the other side, and I'm going to say it's Ohio State's offensive line uh, versus Notre Dame's defensive line. Uh, but both are incredibly important. I mentioned, you know, some post Michigan stress disorder as far as a team just sort of lining it up and going straight at us. Can we stop it? it? Notre Dame's capable of it. You're not going to be able to throw like eight or nine in the box because if you throw nine in the box to try and stop the run, Hartman's going to kill you. So you're going to need to win battles. You can't just load up the box and stop Notre Dame. You're going to have to win a lot of individual battles. And you can't depend upon the linebackers and the safeties to fill in a bunch of the gaps um, on one side and you're just not going to get any running done on the other side. And if you're not getting any running done on the other side, then you're putting it all on McCord in his fourth ever start. Yeah, I, I think that's the right answer. It's, it's the, State offensive line versus Notre Dame's defensive line that's ultimately going to decide this game here. But I'll I'll pick something completely different here and I'll I'll, I'll go with the what the correct answer was for enemy to player watch. I'll go with um Hartman versus Ohio State's DBs here. I think I think from what we've seen with the Ohio State defensive backs, they are more than capable of um of uh winning winning this battle here i think i think they can go ahead and uh really limit the the long balls that sam can do really put them into tougher third down positions here and really try to make notre dame more wide one dimensional if you can make them more one dimensional then those linebackers can start creeping up a little bit closer to that line to to create those uh two three yard carries uh Two, yeah, two to three yards per carry. So I'll, I'll uh, go with Hartman, Hartman versus Ohio State's DBs. I think I think no, I think Coach Nomad forgives you for stealing his answer from the chat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the spread here. I just want to make sure because it it has been moving. Um, oh, doesn't okay. matter if it moves. We're going with the CBS number. It it's is. in our that's in our uh pick'em. And if you want to join the pick'em, join the Discord server. If you want to join the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Always be plugging. Ohio Go State. Ahead. Ohio State is a three and a half point favorite in this game here. Kyle, I said this. Did I say this during 
Did I say this during um, Collegiate Chaos? I don't remember if we were still recording when I said it or not. If Ohio State is minus six and a five, is minus 6.5 or worse, I'm taking Ohio State. I will always put money on Ohio State winning by a touchdown or more. All right, so you're picking Ohio State to cover the spread then, right? I absolutely am picking Ohio State to cover the spread. I, I will never, I will never not take Ohio State. Like I said, if it's minus 6.5 Ohio State, I'm taking that. Um, So 3.5, well, that's just three bonus points for me. All right, so remember, remember at the beginning of the season, Jared, we talked, we were going through a preview and what we were thinking each Big Ten team, how well we thought they were going to do and how many losses they were going to do. Sure. Do you remember what I said about Ohio State? No. Oh, <laughs> I <Austin>. remember, Kyle. <laughs> Austin members. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel a lot better now than I did at the beginning of the season. <laughs> a lot better. Uh, but gosh, it's it's tough. It's tough picking Ohio. It's really tough picking Ohio State to to cover this year at Notre Dame here. Uh, I think in the trenches, Notre Dame, Notre Dame might be the better team here, but. I'm going to go off of, I'm going to still stick with what I said at the beginning of the year and even even more so what, what happened last weekend where we didn't pick Ohio State to cover. So I'm going to pick Notre Dame to cover here. Get him, boys. <laughs> Get him. That, that one right there. That one right there. Go get him. Yeah, see, not, not, they're all Team Jared now. <laughs> Nomad is at least. Can't can't believe you. All right, who's our who's our guest picker this week, Jared? Cousin Jay, cousin Jay from the Discord, and cousin Jay from Kyle's family tree. Hey, um, cousin Jay, I didn't see you at the family reunion. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. No, statement. Ga- he says, "Quote statement game for the Buckeyes." Uh, they've had a road game already this year, although not as hostile an environment. Uh, defensive stability and some key plays by the offense puts it out 34 to 24. Kyle, that is a win and a cover. Easily. From Cousin Jay. Easily. Easily. I hope you're right, Cousin Jay. I, I'm, but I'm still mad at you, Kyle. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Final score, Jared. What do you, so Jay said 34, 24. What did you say? I am sorry, Kyle. I just saw the show notes. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss. Final- I'm at a loss right now, Kyle. I just saw the show notes. What is, what is the final score, Jared? I mean, am I... Am I going to do it, is the question. No, there's no way. There's no way. Not that many points, Jared. Not this game. What's the over-under? <laughs> Nomad says 59 is the new 69. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck it. it. We're doing it. We're going to do it. The over-under is 55 and a half. Yeah, sure. What the hell? It's that doesn't it, it, I have no money on this. What the fuck? Let's 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 have some fun. Let's stick with tradition because it's what we do here. 45 to 24. Holy crap. Really? 45 to 24? Kyle, it's tradition. It's tradition. Do I actually think that's going to be the final score? No. Does my does my final score always equal 69? Yes. I know how to stick to a bit. 
last year last year's score Ohio State won 21 to 10. won 21 to 10. I am aware. Okay, let, let me talk. <laughs> I, I at that 55 and a half, I'm taking the under. I, I think this will be I think the defenses are going to show up on 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 both sides here. It's going to be tough sledding trying to get touchdowns here. I think it's going to be a really close game. So I have I have the final score of uh Notre Dame 21 Ohio State what? You're shaking your head already. Jeez, Jared. <laughs> I have Ohio State 20, or excuse me, Notre Dame 21, Ohio State 24. Just He, he either chickened out or he pulled a nut so fast. I did pull a nut so fast, Jared. Because <laughs> he has Notre Dame written in our show notes. This is why I was offended. So he either... I either peer pressured him no. or he just did a not so fast. Nope, I did a not so fast. All right, moving on, Jared. We got I, I don't know. I don't know. We got, Austin, we got Austin's over unders to get to here. For Noter, he has over unders for Noter Dunn. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All right, he has McCord total yards at 276 and a half. I got the under. Listen. Notre Dame's not played a quarterback all year. They've not played a core of wide receivers that live in the same stratosphere as these Ohio State wide receivers. I no, like McCord at 276.5. I I'm still going to go the under, but man, you, you just said it a little too quick. You just said it a little too quick. I because I think that's uh, it's all, uh, Austin. Austin left. They have uh, they have two played a quarterback. Navy's remember, oh, you you know what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go under, but I think and and I know Austin loves when I say this. It's a it's a really good number. It's a really good number. I said Did under. you say over? I you know said I said over under. Or under. I said under. You said under as well. Okay. Notre Dame rushing. Notre yards Dame's at never seen a wide receiver like Marvin Harrison before. And I mean in the history of the program. Notre Dame rushing yards at 166 and a half. What'd you under. Got, under. If they can get on, if they can get under in that game, that's mm. rushing yards. I, I rushing yards total. No, they, they it has to be way lower than that. Ohio State has not allowed more than. Yeah, the most they've let up in one game was 99 yards. They have not let up 100 yards in a game this year so far. Rushing. Rushing. Yeah. Right. I'll go under as well. I, I want to believe. If they rush for 167, we're in trouble, says AZ. I agree. I want to believe, so I'm going to go under. All right. Hartman touchdowns <laughs> at two and a half. I, I'd say I think it's two. I think the number's two. Yeah, I'll go under as well. Marv total yards at 112 and a half. I'm going to go over because it, it has to be. Listen, Ohio, Ohio State's been playing the junior varsity version of their playbook uh, all year. I think we I think last year or last week was a bit of a dress rehearsal. You know, they, they put they put some of the costume costumes on. The, the paint was still drying on the set, but like this is this is this is actual big boy college football coming. Um, we're going to see route combos we've not seen before. We're, gonna, we're, we're 
Notre Dame's not ready for what's coming from the passing attack. They're not ready for it. They've not seen anything like it. Um, I'm going to go under. I Woody think says, I think I, we have two wide receivers over 100. Woody, I agree. Yeah, I think you have a under. third one in like 60 plus as well. I'm going to go under just I think I think McCord's going to pass the ball around a lot more in this game. So I, that, that would just be less less touches for Marv. So I'll, I'll go under for 112 and a half. Uh, total game turnovers at three and a half. Under. I'm going to go under as well. Yeah, um, Kyle, I know Kyle at least briefly mentioned this at one point. Notre Dame. Uh, turnover statistics, giveaways per game. Uh, point three. They, they give away the they give away a turnover point three times per game. Uh, takeaways one per game. Notre Dame is a very low turnover team, both on both sides. All right. Ohio State sacks at two and a half. If they, if they can get three. I think I think there's going to be I think we'll have a lot of happy people, happy Buckeye fans if Ohio State can get three. Uh, surprisingly, not. Uh, Notre Dame has a lot of good statistics offensively. Um, 56th in the country quarterback sack percentage. So they're pretty middle of the road there. Um, that being said, I think whenever a team plays Ohio State, they know a pass rush is coming. So the question is, how much are they going to trust their offensive line to do the job versus are they just going to be trying to get rid of the ball quickly? I think Notre Dame's going to try and play. I don't think Notre Dame's going to come out and do what Western Kentucky and a bunch of other teams do against Ohio State, which is just like two step throws, two step throws, two step throws, because they they know the pass rush is coming. I think Notre Dame's going to try and play their offense. I think they're going to try to sit in the pocket. I think they're going to uh, give up a couple extra sacks in that process. I'm going to go over. Okay. So in the Notre Dame NC State game, NC State had four sacks. All right, and the last one we have here, Trey Under two step, three step. No such thing as a two step throw. Uh, there is out of a shotgun. Trey Hundo at seventeen and a half touches in this game. My first instinct is to say that feels like a lot. It does seem like a lot. Ohio State's running their running backs like three, at least three guys deep right now. Um, Trey, Trey Henderson against Indiana, 12 touches. Youngstown State, seven. Western Kentucky, 14. But none of those teams under. are Notre I'll, Dame, notably. I'll go under. I'll go under. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go under as well. That would mean the run game is working really well. If the run game is working in the way it needs to be working, Chip and Chop can be running right there with Chisel, I think. All right. I think those are all... Yep, those are all Austin's over unders here. So, um, so speaking of chip chop and chisel, uh, <laughs> um, we do have a question here. Does Burke from well from our um, what, what he calls himself chip chop and chisel right now? <laughs> um, does Burke get his pick six in that's, this game? That's Zach, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I probably not. I mean, just the likelihood of a, any singular player getting a pick six in any singular game is, is pretty low. So statistically speaking, almost certainly not. I also think Notre Dame is going to try to avoid Burke. Um, as Kyle pointed out earlier in the show, uh, Notre Dame doesn't have like 
a wide receiver. They they spread it out amongst um, their three wide receivers and a tight end or two. Uh, I, I think if they're smart, they just uh, j- just where find Burke and look on the other side of the field. Uh, I, I don't know how much Burke will get challenged. I, I think they're going to go after. I think I my assumption is that Notre Dame is going to be throwing to their slot guys a lot, whether that be the tight end or the third wide receiver on the field. Um, and that's just not typically where you're going to find Burke. And one last question here, Jared. Will we get a picture similar like this in the Ohio State Notre Dame game? Uh, yes. That that is the famous for the listening audience. That is Eddie. That is the famous Eddie George running away from the entire Notre Dame uh, defense picture. Uh, I'll tell you this much: Tom Moore over at Buckeye Huddle uh, has already uh, amassed a really nice collection of uh, Travion with a bunch of defenders behind him. <laughs> I, Tom, Tom, if you're listening, Tom, uh, I, 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 wa- I look at your photo gallery every day or not every day, every, after every game. And how about this one, Jared? Sure. That that's, that's a wide receiver running and making the sideline look sad. I think we'll get multiple of those. That, that would be nice. I'm just looking to see if there's okay. any other Kyle? ones that were Kyle. We're we're almost at an hour. I think it's time to I think it's time to move on because clearly if the show's going over, it's 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 your fault and not my loud ass loud ass's fault. Uh, have we heard what Jared? I'm not going to read the rest of that. End the episode, Jared. <laughs> If the show goes over, you have a lot to say. I mean, yeah, we, we knew the Notre Dame game was going to go long. We we typically try to keep know your enemy to like 40, 45, but like it's Notre Dame. We knew we were going over on this one. So it's it's we 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 knew that coming in. Um, uh, Come hang out in the discord server along with all these hooligans down there in the live chat. Um, That's it. We're, we're running over. That's all I want to do. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I'm just going to end it. It's it's a it's a long episode already. Uh, just hope it. Uh, just hope it's a good good weekend here for the Buckeyes. And yeah, should be should be an entertaining game. One would hope. Actually, no, I don't. I am I entertaining in what sense? Because I I want to blow out, and that's only entertaining for us, if we're being honest. But also, screw everyone else. You feel me? I feel you. Yeah, Kyle feels me. All right. Um, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by one of my all-time favorite, just bands actually, but one of my all-time favorite Ohio or Columbus-based band. We're going. We're going to the well tonight. We're going to playing the vapors. Just um, one of my favorites. These are the boys. These are the boys playing the vapors. So, with all that being said. Uh, I, oh, sorry. Uh, you know, was talking about whiskey in the chat and it totally distracted me. <laughs> so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are playing to vapors. Mm-hmm.